Hello everyone, my name is Bodhi Simpson. I'm an art therapist with a private practice in Waterville, Maine called Conscious Art Therapy. I'm also a workshop facilitator at the Prevention and Healthy Living Center at Maine General Medical in Augusta, Maine. Some of the workshops that I've facilitated here have been the Art of Self-Compassion, Journaling for Wellness, and Creative Meditation. I'm here to talk to you today about vulnerability and the importance of developing a daily meditation practice and also some tips on how you can begin. For all of us, life can be overwhelming and especially right now with all that is going on in the world. So many of us are not only dealing with our own immense pressures and stresses to keep it all together, but we're also the emotional supports of our friends and family members in our life. It seems that because we're all so stressed right now, we're, we tend to be giving from this depleted place and many of us feel like we could completely fall apart at any moment. Because of this, especially, I feel like it's, it can be really hard for us to find space that really feels safe to face our vulnerability and, and really be with and honor the truth of how we're actually feeling and what we're actually thinking about. For many of us, we've been taught that vulnerability is a weakness and that it's important just to kind of push through and keep working on those goals and, and really to kind of disconnect and numb out from what we don't want to be thinking about and what we don't want to be feeling. But what happens when we do that is that we also kind of close up our own hearts and block ourselves from also feeling the emotions that we want to be feeling like love and happiness and joy and peace. Because of this, it's extremely important that we all find ways to create space to be with ourselves in our wholeness, ways to, to open to our vulnerability. But for many of us, it, we can feel raw and exposed and it just it doesn't feel safe. Maybe it's never been modeled for us how to do this. And so my hope is that today I can introduce some gentle practices that you could start to incorporate into your life and really build that muscle of how to embrace and nurture and continue to grow your relationship with your own vulnerability. You know, vulnerability is, is often again seen as a weakness, but it's really truly a strength. Vulnerability makes us beautiful. Vulnerability is, is really, you know, risking exposing your, your truth, exposing yourself and, um, and all that comes with that. But truly, it is, it's the only way to fully heal and to grow is to learn how to open. I've explored many different ways to create a daily practice for myself. And I'm going to just share some tips with you. And um, I'd just like to start by saying there's no right or wrong way. When I started exploring this whole realm of you know, how to open to my vulnerability and really be with myself fully without distracting, I was reading a lot of books and I was watching a lot of movies and um, taking workshops with Buddhist monks and and really just searching. I, I kept feeling I was doing it wrong. And what I discovered is, you know, a, a daily practice is simply just, just making space to where you feel open um, and safe to be with yourself. And then, you know, you notice your mind wanders, but you just keep taking time to notice and you're bringing your attention back to the present moment over and over and over. And so what I used to think is that, you know, we were supposed to sit in meditation for 30 minutes or 60 minutes and really just have a clear mind without a thought. And so what I started to do was, you know, my inner critic would come out and I would judge myself for the thoughts that I was having. And, um, and then I would start to feel selfish sometimes if I made space to, to sit with myself. Um, and so what I learned is that anything can be a daily practice. Anything can be a meditation as long as you're bringing consciousness to this practice, you're bringing your presence, you're bringing your heart, and you're willing to be with the truth of what comes up, even if it's uncomfortable. So it's like you could be really present while you're washing dishes. You can be really present while you are going for a walk and connecting to nature around you. You can be present while you are engaging in an art experience or while you're gardening. 
You can practice presence while you're driving in the car. Um, you don't have to be closing your eyes when you're practicing presence. It can be helpful. So, so one tip might be to create a sanctuary or a safe space in your home that is specifically for being with yourself. So what I do is I, you know, often recommend that people find a specific room or even a corner of their house where they can be alone for at least 30 minutes at a time, be uninterrupted, where they turn off the technology, the cell phones, and really allow there to be space for quiet and to really focus on your breath, connecting to your body. Um, and you might even put some objects in this space that will assist you in feeling more relaxed and more comfortable. So, you know, in my space, I might have a real candle, or if it's not safe, if I have little ones around, I might get one of those candles that you turn on with a battery. Um, you might be putting images that, that remind you of peace, or a plant, or maybe a fountain. Maybe it's by a window where you can look outside. But what we wanna do is just have a space that you're gonna be visiting regularly that when you enter into the space, over time what you'll start to do is notice that your body will kind of start to sink into this relaxed state. Now for some of us, especially now during COVID, there's really no alone time. So it can also feel frustrating to do this in your home if you just don't have any space to be alone. So I'm actually finding that some people are choosing to go and sit in their vehicles to make space to be with themselves and go within. And some people are choosing to consciously go for a walk and be in nature and be present in this way. Right now here in Maine, it is winter and it can be tricky um, to just sit outside in nature, but if you have the right gear, that could be possible. Or again, you could engage in a walking meditation. The other thing that I did is after I, I took time to practice just being in my body and being aware of my thoughts and focusing on my breath and just coming back into my body over and over and over again is I kind of wanted to break the rules a little bit. So I, well, in my mind, it was breaking the rules. It really wasn't, but I was like, you know, I feel like my mind kind of needs a job. So what I started to do is I incorporated creativity into my daily meditation practice. And for me, it made it really fun, really playful and really accessible and I, I kind of got to the point where I could start to do a practice within two to five minutes so um, that it was doable and that I could make sure that I built in time in my day to be able to do it in a realistic way because I really don't think it matters how much time you're taking I don't think it matters if you're taking 30 minutes a day or two minutes a day I think the key is really committing to a daily practice where you're meeting yourself over and over and over again. And the amount of time that you sit may depend on, again, on your day, on your energy level, but again, just making space to commit every single day. So what I did is I started laying out art materials in a really beautiful way in my meditation space. So my meditation space was a, a table or a drawing board that I had a basket with some just some nice materials. I had some chalk pastels and oil pastels and color pencils and um, graphite pencils and um, you know depending on your space you could also add paints and papers and origami you know whatever you're drawn to and I would take time I would take deep breaths and I would connect to how I was feeling in my body and just slow down until I really felt a little bit more quiet and a little bit more centered because often there's a lot going on in my life and it just took me a few moments. Um, you're seeing I'm putting my hands on my heart. That's a really nice way to bring some gentle self-acceptance and kindness to yourself. For me, it's kind of become a reflex, but this is also a practice you could do at any time in the day where you just, um, you know, just notice that you're feeling overwhelmed or triggered or stressed. You bring your hands to your heart, take a deep breath, and you just allow yourself to receive some love and genuine kindness from yourself to yourself. Um, but I would do this before I would engage in my creative practice. I would notice what I'm feeling and then I would look at my colors. So I might lay out some chalk pastels, for example, and I would just choose a color that expressed how I was feeling. So if I was feeling extremely overwhelmed, I may choose colors like browns and 
blues and purples, kind of like bruisey colors, for instance, I would just express those on the paper. Just take me a minute. I would just practice feeling it while I was kind of bringing this uh, invisible form into a form that I could view with my eyes. And then what I would do for my meditation is I would sit with what I expressed. I would sit with the colors and I would connect in my own body to what that feels like. And so I'd be feeling it, but I'd also be witnessing my process. And so what happens is when we can express this felt experience in colors outside of ourselves, not only are we tied into um, to the emotional experience, but we're also removed from it a little bit where we can actually be in the experience, but also witness the experience. And when we can witness it, we can also start to rise above what's overwhelming us and what's blocking us. And we can access a clearer perspective, really more aligned with, with the truth of what's happening. So again, I would just use this practice to, to stay with the energy and really to be with my truth. And this process for me is also deeper than words. So, um, you don't have to label everything. You can just take space to be present to what you're noticing. And, and sometimes what I would do is I would stay with that image until, until I noticed it shifting. And sometimes I would take space to visualize how I wanted to be feeling. And I would connect to the colors that really felt like how I want to be feeling. And then I would express that onto the paper. So for instance, for me, joy and expansiveness feels like bright yellow. And so I might choose bright yellow and just practice coloring a page of yellow and connecting to the color of yellow. And as I'm breathing in, I am breathing in the color of yellow. Um, and then as I step into my day, I am, I am imagining yellow. And so these are just suggestions. So I really, w I'm hoping that some part of what I'm mentioning today might inspire you to really more consciously create and step into your own daily practice. You can try out some of the things that I've mentioned, or you can really start to soul search around what feels comfortable for me. How do I express myself um, most comfortably? Or how do I want to learn to express myself? You know, maybe for you it's music and really being present with music or creating music. Um, again, it could be any, any practice that you engage in every day, consciously and mindfully. And as you practice, again, nurturing and opening yourself to your vulnerability, this will become an experience that is like a muscle that will grow over time. You will learn how to give yourself um, gentle kindness and caring and self-acceptance no matter what situation is happening and you will start to learn how to be more aware of what's triggering you and it will give you that sense of uh, mastery over your ability to to shift your perspective so that you can really step into your life in a really clear and centered and grounded way so again some of the tips just to review are create a sanctuary in your home where you visit every day. Another tip could be really taking time to get into nature to practice opening to the truth of how you're feeling because nature is a natural, um, you know, mother nature, the great mother, you know, a space to really connect to this energy of, of nurturing and um, holding space for yourself alone where nobody else is around. Um, connecting to the wind and the sun and the stillness of nature. You know, another tip could be to, um, you know, start to gather your tools. Just if you're interested in, in art materials, start to gather some art materials. Start to think about the times where you could engage in these practices. So for me, I really enjoy morning. And then what I learned now is that because I've learned how to do this in two to five minutes, I do this at intervals throughout my day. So you could also think about when could I find space to incorporate a brief daily practice every day in the morning, before bed, or both, um, at intervals throughout the day when you're eating your meals, when you're showering, when you're in the bathroom, as you're driving in your car or in between classes or meetings. 
um, but really taking some time to be proactive and really vision how you could incorporate daily practices into your life. And again, remembering that the key and the doorway into your growth and healing is learning how to open to your own vulnerability. I thank you all so much for listening to my talk today about vulnerability and the importance of creating a daily meditation practice. And I really look forward to when we can be together for an in-person workshop at the Healthy Living and Prevention Center at Maine General Medical and um, wishing you all the best this year in 2021. I'll see you soon.